This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From custom domains to beautiful websites using their easily customizable templates that you can have up and running in minutes, e-commerce, email and email marketing, SEO, analytics, and scheduling, Squarespace does it all and has done it for us for the last six years. If you are a small to mid-sized business in any industry, Squarespace is the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash you for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code Hugh at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. Don't get me wrong. I plunked down my own hard cash for an A7S III earlier this year, but as a video-only tool for our channel, I'd made peace with the fact that there is not a single hybrid camera capable of delivering what I want for video and stills. But so many people said, come on, it's fine for stills, and I have shot many photographs over the years that I enjoy with 12 megapixels or less. And we are carrying around so much gear all the time that I thought, maybe, maybe I can be happy with the A7S III as a stills camera too, if I put my mind to it. It would be a whole lot easier if Claudia and I only had to schlep around one set of lenses when we're in New York instead of two. So... Earlier this week, we went back out onto the streets of New York, this time mixing our state-of-the-art 9.44 million dot EVF IBIS-equipped A7S III with the old-school charm and economic allure of a brand new sub-250 dollar manual focus only 50 millimeter 1.4 aspherical lens provided to us courtesy of TT Artisan. Uh, this guy. And you know what? Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. Before we get started, a quick heads up. A few seats have opened up in our Streets of New York workshops happening later this month. If you're interested, hop over to www.3bmep.com slash streets21 to learn more and snag one of them if you'd like. Okay, on to the A7S III as a stills camera, and I'll just cut to the chase. With its incredible EVF, Perfect for manually focusing cine lenses, of course, which is why it makes sense in a video-centric camera. The A7S III makes focusing with old-school manual photography lenses as good as it gets to, mirrorless or not, full stop. You can punch in for critical focus without smearing or nausea-inducing rolling shutter, which you can't do at all with a DSLR or quite the same way with any other mirrorless save for one. Hold that thought. And while I don't enjoy using cryptically labeled buttons like C2 for anything, there's no denying that the C2 button on the A7S III, as it comes out of the box, is relatively well-placed for focus magnification and does cycle through two levels of magnification right back to full screen, unlike, say, Nikon's Z6. Which is to say, well done. And why I decided to explore the A7S III's suitability as a stills camera by selecting TT Artisan's manual focus only 50mm 1.4 aspherical in native Sony mount. It's a great combo, small, light, fast, with great battery life and a high enough shutter speed that shooting 1.4 in broad daylight is no problem. I never felt the weight was a burden over the course of walking almost 10 miles on the streets in a single day. Though, if old-school manual focus is not your thing, I understand. Any of Sony's new tiny but performant $600, 24, 2.8, 40, and 50 f2.5s are great for street work, too. It did not shock me, however, that given how we've been shooting for the past year or two, hold that thought, the A7S III's 12 megapixels felt constraining. What did shock me, however, then again, it didn't. If you've watched my other videos, you've heard me talk about the diffusion of technology and skill across the globe. Was the TT Artisan lens. So, actually, let's start with that. The TT Artisan feels lovely in hand. Very solid. Nicely finished with a silky smooth focus throw. Just the way the best old school photography lenses do feel. More importantly, it comported itself very well in the real world on the A7S III with images like this.
I do not believe I could have achieved focus this good, this easily and consistently on any other camera save Sony's own $6,500 A1 with which the A7S III shares its finder. More impressively, but let's face it, less importantly for most of us, because pixel peeping is not real life, the TT Artisan took me aback in our Bat Studio reference test, where I compared it to my Leica Summicron M 50mm f2, fifth generation, built in 1997 but designed back in 79, my Canon FL 51.8, the first interchangeable lens I ever owned, first released in 1964, and the Sony 50 2.5G I just mentioned a minute or three ago, all of which I also own. As much as I hate pixel peeping and really guys to thoroughly ring out a lens, it needs to be tested at at least three different distances with a variety of three-dimensional subjects across multiple lighting scenarios, so let's not get carried away. I was so surprised by the TT Artisan's performance that I repeated the tests multiple times. It kept up with the Summicron from wide open and the Sony. A credit to all three, really. A 42-year-old design in the first case, a tiny weather-resistant $600 state-of-the-art autofocusing lens from the most aggressive and innovative camera manufacturer in the second case, and an inexpensive lens from a new Chinese lens manufacturer in the third case. And wipe the floor with the pre-multi-coated Canon FL 51.8. With this said, these were the results when mated with, right, 12 megapixels, little to no cropping, which means differences among the lenses might well become very apparent when using a higher resolution sensor. And all of them showed more chromatic aberration than I care to entertain, especially longitudinal chromatic aberration wide open, the kind that is not easily corrected in post. All cleaned up nicely as I stopped down the lens, however, as you'd expect, save for the Canon which is why Claudia and I have the lenses we do, 
for the cameras we use, a 45 megapixel Nikon Z7 II and 47 megapixel Leica SL2 respectively, and one more reason why, when I do shoot older glass, I always shoot for those lenses, limitations, character if you will, taken into account. Now on to the A7S III and the question, is it a great stills camera? You already know the answer to this. No. I mean, what did you expect? Acceptable? That's really the wrong question at 3500 bucks. I'm not going to make the case that 12 megapixel stills from a $3,500 camera is the way to go in 2021, even with the A7S III's many advantages. Of course, your mileage may vary, and as always, that's fine. But I'd say... If you wanted to forego a second set of lenses and already have an S3, pick up a used garden variety 24 megapixel A7 III to complement your S3 instead, or an A7C even better, or an APS-C 6400. Just don't expect a great viewfinder experience. I'd limit their use primarily to autofocus lenses. The thing of it is, more megapixels is not about fine detail at normal image sizes and viewing distances. In my experience, you can easily print up to A3 and be happy with 12 megapixels, which is larger than most people print anyway for those people who even do print. It is, however, about the advantages of cropping and, yes, image quality at larger and closer than normal image sizes and viewing distances. Not that we don't adhere to the general admonition to maximize every square millimeter of the frame. We do. But we also recognize that a dogma born of film era limitations shields us from taking full advantage of Moore's law. And in this day and age, that's just silly. Cartier-Bresson cropped. Arnold Newman cropped. They didn't let dogma get in the way of art. Put differently, Claudia and I are now firmly of the opinion that even for our personal street work, resolution north of 40 megapixels is where it's at. That's because, A, we are willing to accept the higher cost of more megapixels for photography in exchange for less bulk weight and cost of extra lenses when we're on the street shooting just photographs. Let's hold aside the separate system we use for video. B, we're happy to crop the crap out of images when they look this good when you punch in. And see, we do print large, up to 55 inches on the long side, and view up close. Of course, there's always the option of a Sony A1, but that is beyond what most of us can or want to spend, and we love what we have. Now, if Sony were to put this EVF in a $2,000, even $3,000 body with at least 24 megapixels, that would be something. Short of dropping almost seven large or waiting for a camera unicorn, however, there are any number of cameras beyond the Sony Fold with megapixel EVF IBIS trade-offs that make more sense for still or hybrid shooters than the 12 megapixel A7S III, cameras that are also evolving into or already are excellent video platforms as well. If you insist upon full frame, think Nikon Z6 II, Z7 II, Panasonic's S1 or S1R, though none of these can do what an S3 can do fully in video. Or, for those of us with the budget and inclination, a Leica SL2, now with firmware 3.0 that, most importantly for us, eliminates the recording limit at 24p. Though, at that point, you're in A1 price territory, and even with the firmware update, there's no comparison between the SL2 and A1 for video autofocus or manual focus, cine or stills full stop. 
I may much prefer the SL2 in hand. I do. But the A1 and the A7S3 smoke it for actual EVF performance. It's not just a resolution thing. It's how much better the new 9.44 million dot unit is when you punch in, which is to say nothing short of revelatory. This EVF should be in a Leica. If you relax the requirement of full frame, think Fujifilm X-T4, Panasonic GH5, GH5 II, or G9. We've got ginormous prints on our walls from both systems, and all of the cameras I've just mentioned have at least a 3.7 million dot EVF and a 20 megapixel sensor. But again, none of them touch the A7S III or A1 for manual focusing. Why did I leave out Canon's R5 and R6 brilliant cameras in their own right? Not reliable enough for hardcore video, with too limited a selection of native RF mount lenses for what we do. Why did I leave out the Fujifilm X-S10 and Panasonic S5, both excellent hybrid cameras, better than the a7 III, and far more accessibly priced with twice the pixel count of the S3? Suboptimal EVFs. Though again, if you don't use manual focused lenses, they're wonderful choices for still photography too, and they are performant for autofocus. But... What does all of this mean to you? I'll put it to you as straightforwardly as I can. If you are a sports or wildlife shooter, like most sports and wildlife shooters, you want to maximize the effective focal length of your long lens or lenses by using a crop sensor camera with at least 20 megapixels. Think the oldie but goodie Canon 7D Mark II and or a full frame camera with even more megapixels like the Sony A1. If you are a portrait, fashion or event photographer, 12 megapixels may be more than enough. I mean, let's get real. As long as you're not cropping, at what size and viewing distances will your images be consumed by whom, such that you believe you need more? But you will want the precise focal length and aperture for the job. In the Sony sphere, this probably most often means one of their G Masters, like the already legendary 135 1.8, 24 1.4, or the more mundane, but staples nonetheless of all three segments, 24 to 70 or 70 to 200 2.8. But you may not always have the focal length you want on you at a critical moment, or you may get just part of a critical shot how you want it on the fly. And there may well be times when you will want the margin for cropping that 24 megapixels or more can give you. Landscape shooter? You probably revel in the details, and 12 megapixels may rob you of that pleasure. Or not. Street photographer. Hey, Cartier-Bresson and so many others did more with less, so yes, you can get by with 12 megapixels. But if street photography is your thing, then you likely wouldn't have chosen an A7S III in the first place. Maybe something smaller than full frame, smaller than an X-T4 or GH5 too, like a Sony A6400, maybe a Lumix GX9 or a Ryko, Ricoh, GR3 or 3X. Maybe a Sony RX100 Mark VII or Lumix LX100 Mark II. Still, if 12 megapixels works for you, who am I to argue? Finally, if casual travel photography is your thing, or if casual shots of the family is where you find you're happy, 12 megapixels will likely be more than enough. And that is kind of it. Although, at that point, an iPhone 13 might really be a much better choice. Then again, who knows what's going to happen over the next few months. Hold those thoughts for new videos coming soon. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. For all of your website needs, Squarespace is the place to go. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash you for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code Hugh at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below because this is an incredible audience. If you'd like a copy of our Streets of New York, the book, head over to www.3bmep.com slash books. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one video session with me for a portfolio review, explore or hone your artistic voice, select gear and more, sign up at www.3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, consider supporting our work by using our no-cost-to-you affiliate links down below, picking up some official three blind men and an elephant swag at 3bmep.threadless.com, sending coffee money via PayPal, or best of all, Join us as a patron over at Patreon. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.